people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. What is correspondence between three division champion Shakur Stevenson and an avid fan of Shakur as to what is next for the fighter and WBC lightweight champion? A Twitter user that goes by the name Hassan asked, let me find out Tank took Zepeda from Shakur, to which Shakur responded, nope. Zepeda and Oscar are just pushing the fight back as long as he could. He wants to hold on to that O. Oh, this has given rise to talks that Shakur may instead face former IBF super featherweight champion Joe Cordinia, who's going to be moving up the lightweight. Hassan responded to that news by saying, I don't want to see that. He just got stopped by a guy that didn't get a knockout in eight years. He's talking about Kakache. To which Shakur Stevenson responded, he was weak fighting at 130. He's actually a really good fighter, was just sucking himself down to make weight he shouldn't have been making. I for sure wouldn't want to take dude lightly, but Zepeda don't want to fight just yet. So whoever it is going to be, they're going to get this work. It would seem that Matchroom is providing an opponent for Shakur, so that entails them working together. Eddie Hearn and Matchroom are a bit more flexible with fighters than, say, Golden Boy or Top Rank or some other promotional outfits who would want a commitment from a fighter to do any business with them. Eddie Hearn, he doesn't require one. Remember that he worked with Dillian White for a number of years on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. Dillian White was never an according to Hoyle matchroom fighter. He never had a contract with them, but he did have a good working relationship with Eddie Hearn, who's more flexible than some other promoters. In more recent years, Eddie was working with Devin Haney. In some ways, he might still be working with Devin Haney, even though Devin's not signed to matchroom, the Regis Progray fight. Eddie didn't make it a requisite that Devin Haney signed a matchroom in order to get a pro gray fight. The way that Oscar stipulated Shakur must sign to Golden Boy in order to get Zepeda. Eddie doesn't do that. It would seem that Eddie's gonna give Shakur access to Joe Cordinia in the interim, creating an opportunity for Shakur Stevenson to keep busy, make some money, affording Joe Cordinia a world title opportunity, a title shot, upon moving up to 135. So no Zepeda, huh? I don't think William Zepeda's afraid of Shakur. I think Oscar De La Hoya's afraid of Shakur. He doesn't really want to make that fight. Turkey's got to notice it. He has to by now. That it's a lot easier making fights, meaningful fights, with the fighters across the pond, the fighters in the UK and other parts of Europe. It's easier to make meaningful fights with them than it is to make fights with the American-based fighters, either the Americans or just the fighters based out of America, that it's a lot more difficult here. It's like pulling teeth. He has to notice it by now that the American-based promotional outfits are a lot more protective of their fighters, and some of the fighters based out of America, they're difficult to work with, to get them in the ring. To put them in a fight. Even if I think William is an entertaining fighter to watch, must see TV, and even if I think William isn't afraid of Shakur, Oscar's afraid of Shakur, it all means the same thing, that the fight between them isn't going down. Turkey has to notice it. How quickly things get done when you're working with the fighters across the pond and some other fighters based out of Europe and how quickly things don't get done here in America in this boxing scene. It's a pain in the ass. As good a fight as Stevenson versus Zepeda is, you don't need to marinate that. What do you think? You have to marinate every single fight involving every two solid fighters? I mean, seriously. Come on. If the money's not an issue, the money's not an object anymore, then what are you really waiting for? You see, it used to be that you might have to wait. You might have to build it up over time so that you can generate enough money with the buzz around the fight 
to satisfy what both the fighters want. But Turkey is removing that obstacle. Because he's bringing the money. All you have to do is fight. And even with that, there's friction. There's problems. It's a problem now. Risk-averse fighters in some instances. Risk-averse promoters in others. Turkey al Sheik is removing the excuses that they normally hide behind. Because money's not an issue platforms aren't an issue there's no reason you shouldn't be able to make a simple fight like stevenson versus zapeta and yet here we are this is a simple fight this ain't maypack this ain't mayweather versus pacquiao this ain't even crawford versus spence what is the problem it's not money the money is there frankly oscar just doesn't want to do it it really is that simple don't overthink it there's money there's a world title shakur actually has a profile more of a profile than the guys that william has been fighting everything you need is there and still it's not happening <laughs> In men's junior middleweight news, despite Turkey al Sheik's claim, the August 3rd show was a sellout in name only, according to Lance Pugmire and Jason Langendorf. In the days before the August 3rd LA card, headlined by Terence Crawford versus Israel Madrimov's junior middleweight title fight, the man who helped stage it, Saudi Arabia's power broker, Turkey al Sheik, announced that the show had sold out, but the fact should be accompanied with an asterisk. According to a Department of Consumer Affairs and California State Athletic Commission document reviewed by Boxing Scene, nearly 4,000 tickets were given away for the blockbuster event, Al Al Sheikh's first in the United States. A total of 3,935 tickets to the 21,799 capacity show were categorized as exempt meaning that 18.1% of available seats may have been filled but were not purchased. Organizers gave away $500 seats at the highest rate, with 1,116 of those 3,449 available tickets, 32.4%, going out as freebies. A veteran combat sports ticket broker who declined to be identified because of his connection to the business told Boxing Scene that many fight organizers will paper an event with hundreds of tickets to boost gate numbers and ensure a sellout, at least in name. But the source said any figure nearing 20% is considered to be significant distribution of free tickets and heavily papering a venue. Although the loaded show was considered an anecdotal success by many fans, Crawford won a sometimes slow but ultimately suspenseful and significant decision while Jose Valenzuela and Martin Bacoli scored upset wins. So what does selling out really mean? I think that most people hear sellout and think to themselves that they filled the place out to capacity when all it really means is they sold what they intended to sell. These box office results underscore questions that were already being asked about Turkey Al Al Sheikh's tactics around the event and the long-term viability of boxing supercards such as the August 3rd Riyadh season show. But how can you keep spending the money you're spending and doing shows like these if you can't turn over a profit. If the event you spent all that money on doesn't have an ROI. There are ballpark figures out there as to what the fight generated at the gate, what it generated at the box office, how many pay-per-views they sold. At the gate, Crawford versus Madrimov brought in over $8 million from 17,799 tickets sold according to the California State Athletic Commission's official box office report. That's the gate. Now on pay-per-view, the card is said to have generated somewhere in the neighborhood of $16 million at just under 200,000 pay-per-views sold. If we round that up to an even 200,000 multiplied by an $80 price point, what you're looking at is roughly $16 million on pay-per-view and another 8 million or just over 8 million at the gate, coming to a grand total total of 24 million. Not too shabby, not bad, but some people are calling these figures underwhelming. That for the money they spent to do it, an undisclosed number, we don't really know, it should have brought in more. So how is this sustainable? Well, maybe to a promoter or a network, a platform it isn't. But to the Saudis, this is just a drop in the bucket. This is nothing. And that's what needs to be addressed and understood right away. What else needs to be understood 
is that the American boxing scene is not what it used to be. Here in America, there are a number of problems that don't see the boxing fans spending as much money as they used to. Why? What happened? Boxing is known as the poor man's sport. That's who it really caters to, the poor man, the working class man. And over the years, boxing became more and more of a luxury item as more and more paywalls were added to the sport. Thus, those who consume boxing, the number of people that was spending money on boxing shrunk as boxing moved over to premium cable networks and the goal became putting on very big pay-per-views that's essentially two paywalls because you have to pay for cable and then you have to pay again for the pay-per-view oh. only so many people were going to do that and this had a gradual effect over time that saw the audience that consumes boxing shrink over time as other sports are more accessible easily viewed on terrestrial networks so you have to consider the effect that premium cable networks and pay-per-views had on the market the subsequent change to stream streaming platforms, which still is another paywall, because you have to pay for a subscription, then you have to pay for the pay-per-view, the rise in piracy, the uptick in pirate streams that allow the viewer to watch a fight like Crawford vs. Madrimov for free, this might leave someone feeling so inclined not to pay. Why should they? It's what they're telling themselves. If they can watch it for free, they will. You have to account for piracy the uptick in illegal streams, but you also have to account for the uptick in box office fights, as there are more box office fights within a calendar year now than there ever were before, which results in oversaturation of the market. Every month or every other month, they're charging you $80. There's only so much money you can draw from an oversaturated market, especially from a niche market like the boxing market that has shrunk over time, boxing isn't at the forefront of the American sporting landscape. So you have to account for piracy, you have to account for oversaturation of the market, you have Turkey Al Al Sheikh and what pay-per-views he's doing, but there are other outfits out there doing pay-per-views too. Don't forget, Golden Boy Promotions did Haney versus Garcia. That was a pay-per-view. Every show the PBC has done this year has been a pay-per-view. Davis versus Martin, Canelo versus Mungia, Zoo versus Fundora. This ain't even counting the pay-per-views that Turkey has been doing. This ain't even counting his. Next month, you have the Joshua versus Dubois pay-per-view. That's the same month that Canelo's gonna be fighting Edgar Berlanga on pay-per-view on Amazon Prime. So believe me when I tell you that oversaturation of the market has its role to play as well. There's too many pay-per-views. So where even a stacked card, a great card like Crawford versus Madrimov might struggle at the box office because every other month there's a fight on pay-per-view. And don't forget that we pay about three, four times as much as the Brits for a box office fight. They're paying somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 30 bucks for a fight. We're paying 80. If the goal is to make boxing big in America again, you may have to remove some of these paywalls. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but that's when boxing was at its biggest, when everybody had access to it on terrestrial television. Now, obviously things have changed. Streaming platforms are all the rage, subscriptions, and there's no such thing as a free lunch. Some are gonna look at these viewing figures as an indictment on Turkey and his ability to sell fights when I look at it as an indictment on the Americans and their ability to buy fights. This ain't the mecca of boxing anymore. How many times have you heard me say that? The Brits, their boxing market is actually a lot more fertile and vibrant. It's a reason that their fans are now regarded as the best boxing fans in the world. It's because they show up and show out more than the Americans do. I mean, look at what we have to pay. Veteran boxing scribe Abraham Gonzalez took to his social media and said, oh. Pay-per-view.com revealed the price point for Canelo versus Berlanga. At the end of the day, it's up to you whether or not you will buy or pass. Also, for those that will reply and say, but the Prime Video price isn't out yet, they have priced it the same or a dollar cheaper since their first Prime Video pay-per-view, so Prime isn't given no big discounts, lol. DAZN will likely do some subscription package, but that's about it. The price point is $89.99, roughly $90. A hundred if you round up. It's practically a hundred dollars. $89.99, that's practically a hundred dollars. For a fight, nobody was asking Canelo to have. And the card that is far less ambitious than the Riyadh season show we saw earlier this month. You tell yourself that 
North America is so many times bigger than the United Kingdom. How could you sit there and say that they have a more fertile boxing landscape than we do? That you see better patronage for the sport in such a small area, small compared to the United States. And it's because while the United States is many times bigger than the United Kingdom, how many of those people are actually boxing fans? What's the median number that a boxing match is likely to bring in in America? Turkey Al Sheikh just did his first US show. I think he will see a noticeable difference with his first UK show next month. The Joshua versus Dubois fight, I'd wager that fight is gonna do bigger numbers bigger, better numbers than the U.S. show. I'd wager they're gonna do better at the gate, they're gonna do better at the box office, just in the U.K. alone. And whatever it brings in outside of that market, say from the Americans or some other place, that's just extra. That's just a bonus. I think that's what Turkey's gonna see. I think that's what he's going to figure out when all the numbers are in and they can cross compare. The American market may start to seem like it's more trouble than it's worth because there's really only one guy that does real numbers real numbers here in america and that's canelo that's him that's it david benavidez has been on pay-per-view two times what did that do zoo versus fundora that should have never even been a pay-per-view but it was yeah out of necessity since amazon ain't given the pbc no budget of any kind do you think that struggling to sell a pay-per-view in america is somehow exclusive to riyadh season why do you think showtime ended up leaving the sport of boxing they were trying to peddle those pbc pay-per-views like hotcakes but they weren't moving like hotcakes and they're not going to did gervonta davis do in his last fight what he did with ryan last year you know the answer we all do and we know what the problem is so what is the solution what for a country this size well, ideally what you want is more people watching more boxing. And in order to get there, it needs to be more accessible, accessible to the casual observer. As the more paywalls you put up, the more obscure the sport becomes. More emphasis on the regular schedule of fights throughout the calendar year. There is another ideological problem that has not yet been addressed that almost every fighter today aspires to be on pay-per-view where pay-per-view was never intended for every fighter or just any fighter. Or just any fight. So often we see promoters resort to making fights pay-per-views in order to try and satisfy the financial demands of the fighters, but maybe those demands are too high. Maybe you want too much. Resulting in cards that really shouldn't even be behind a paywall. They shouldn't be pay-per-views. It's a separate conversation. Turkey Al Al Sheikh is making an aggressive investment in the sport. He's an aggressive businessman, and I'm sure that he can identify many of these problems himself. He'll figure it out. But as for the fighters and their teams, the most I can say to them is, you better get while the getting is good because nothing lasts forever. Turkey's creating opportunities right now for these fighters to make the kind of money they wouldn't otherwise make from the sport. Some question whether or not this is financially viable. How long is that gonna last? I don't have that answer. We don't know. And that's why you better get while the getting is good. While Turkey's making these cash injections, these massive cash injections into the sport, you better get some for yourself. Nothing ventured, nothing gained.